Raven, an expert, an authority, a connoisseur, a specialist, a professional, a knowledge king, a rock and roll sports talker. Coons Ford of Security Boulevard is proud to present The Sports Maven with Bruce Posner, a no-holds-barred look at the sports world. Now, here's Bruce Posner, The Sports Maven. A lot going on today. Welcome in today. We got just uh, just a ton of stuff watching the USA demolish Australia 12 nothing. John Galloway is playing out of his mind. And Trevor Baptiste is just making this one-sided. Uh, but on the phone right now, we got so much to talk about. Wimbledon, uh, the World Cup, the Orioles still, Manny, 60 games left in the season, and he's still an Oriole. But right now, I've got a good friend of mine, a uh, longtime friend, big booster for the University of Maryland, who's got a lot to get off his chest. His name, Rick Jacklett. Rick, welcome in today. Thanks, Bruce. How you doing? And how good would Trevor Baptiste have looked in a, a Turb uniform and face-off, huh? Uh, well, you know what? We didn't do so bad. Right? <laughs> we, we haven't exactly failed. And, you know, when we finally faced Trevor Baptiste, in the semi- they controlled them. Yeah, we, in the semifinal, we held our own. We didn't control them. We held our own. But holding your own against them just took Denver completely out of their game. No doubt. And uh, he's the greatest. He really is. He is just something unbelievable. And uh, Danowski's done a great job with his team. Of course, he's got to win the gold medal or else it's a failure. <laughs> but let's get down to what you, you called me up. You've never done this before. You were so upset. You insisted on coming on and our friendship goes back a long way and Rick is very upset with the way the University of Maryland has been treated uh, in the media and everywhere else where they've been painted a very bad picture so Rick start it off babe and some of that frustration Bruce is from our own fans and the speculations of our own fans and the media saying well gee would there's smoke there's fire because of these uh, subpoenas from the uh, federal government no <laughs> no, there's no smoke. There's no fire. Turgeon has done absolutely nothing wrong. While other schools are paying players to go to their school, the allegations around Maryland are that a Maryland player was paid not to go to Maryland by another school. And the subpoenas involving Maryland have to do with Diamond Stone, who Maryland absolutely had nothing to do with any of the agent to the student, nothing to do with that. And the other subpoena has to do with uh, Sylvia D'Souza, who was recruited away from Maryland. You know, one of the best buddies of Bruno Fernandez by Kansas. And the allegations are that Kansas paid money to D'Souza, not Maryland. And I'm just getting so frustrated with the media just driving this on when there's no evidence anywhere of any misconduct by Maryland. And Bruce, you know Mark Turgeon. He runs a clean program. He will always run a clean program. I will always support him no matter what until there's evidence smack in the face of any wrongdoing, which I can tell you, I I guarantee I will never see. Listen. We both know Mark. You might know him a little bit better, but I know him pretty well, all right? And this is a man who says grace before his meals, all right? This is a, this is a guy from the Midwest of the country who is so, I'm not going to say conservative, okay, but so uh, living within the, fines, the confines of his religion and his beliefs. There's no way, there's no way that he would ever participate it's something untoward, all right? That and not only would he not participate, he would never, never tolerate any of his other coaches participating in anything like that. Right. And Bruce, I can't think of a single coach out there anywhere in America in any sport that I would rather have a son of mine go play for than Mark Turgeon. There's I a, respect him that much. This is, this is, and so much debate about his coaching ability that I'm tired of talking about it. But you can't attack him as a man, as a parent, as a as a family man, as his devotion to Maryland. Uh, you want to talk about his coaching ability? How about his first year at Maryland, Bruce? He had six walk-ons on that team and still won 19 Wait, wait a minute. I'm not criticizing, but i got to tell you what, Rick. I take a lot of incoming, okay? And I'm sure you do, too. All right? A lot of incoming. But here's the bottom line. I wouldn't trade him for another coach in the country. Listen to me. Here's the bottom line, though. All right. If you're the coach of Maryland and you don't make the NCAA tournament, 
All right. There is no excuse. You have to make the tournament. Do you agree with that? I there, agree with that, but at the same no, time. No, there's no buts. There, no, there, there, there is a but. Because it's not an excuse either. You show me another coach in America that can take season ending injuries to two of his top five players and not have a major effect on that team. Well, if you ask Mark Turgeon the same thing I just said, he would agree. All right? I agree with you. He, he just, so he's got to find a way to get in the tournament. He's got the team this year. Uh, he's got uh, some depth. And, I, you know, I know he got to the tournament three years in a row, uh, won two of the first-round games, and, uh, you know, I'm all in favor of him. I, mean, I see him at work. I see how the guys like him. I see how they play for him. There's just a lot of questions that I feel are, are like, uh, you know, just ridiculous. It's almost, you know, it reminds me of, Rick, when Gary made seven, six straight uh, sweet 16s and people were criticizing him for not being in the final four, you know, oh, and people were criticizing Gary. Yeah, it was, it was, ridic- it was ridiculous. It, and Bruce, it's the same thing. And you say to them, OK, who would you hire? And they have no answer. Then shut up. You know, I mean, there's nobody I would trade him for. And before the answer is why well, I'd trade him for for uh, Miller. OK, in Arizona. Well, how's that looking now? Not so hot. Uh, Mark's got a great team coming in next year, a great recruiting class, too. Jalen Smith's going to help them a lot. This kid Aaron Wiggins, who played for Keith Gatlin down in uh, Charlotte. Going to pick up shooter. right where Herter left off, and he's more athletic. Okay. I think Aaron Wiggins is going to be a better player than Kevin Herter his first day in the Turp uniform. Which scares me that he's only going to be here for one year, which is like part of the problem. And I will tell you this, and I'm very happy to see it. The brilliant, and I mean brilliant, commissioner of the NBA, all right, has Adam Silver, is just about ready to do away with the one and done rule. I mean, you and I agree. The best program one and done is ruining basketball, college basketball. And the thing, the way to solve it would be to go exactly like the college baseball draft is, right? You can commit to a school before you come to college. That's fine. Okay, you come to school and not take the minor league route, then you have to stay at the school three years, and the team can't touch it. I think three. two years would be a good compromise, and uh, you're right. That's how it should be. If kids are good enough to go straight to the pros, you know, you think the, you think Maryland would have been hurt if Diamond Stone went straight to the pros. By the way, I will tell you this. Diamond Stone's playing great in the summer league. I happened to watch it the other day, and he had like 50, 12 rebounds and 15 points. So, you know, the the final war, but he left too early. It was ridiculous. He wasn't ready. All he right? wasn't ready. And, you know, he had one top-notch game. That was against Penn State where he had the 39 points. After that, he just, you know, he just wasn't a mature kid. And he needed another year or two years in college to just mature. And hopefully he's matured now and he's he's ready to play. But right, tell me he wouldn't have been drafted much higher if he'd stayed at Maryland at least. Oh, earlier. it's ridiculous! And plus the fact he was drafted just uh, like it was the middle of the second round, I think. And right. just, the, the whole thing was if you're not a first round pick, you should not, never leave. All right? And that's why Kevin Herter did things so right, and he was advised so well by the people around him, including Mark Turgeon. Is yeah, go to the NBA camp, see what they say, see what kind of feedback you get. Well, Herter's feedback was he had a great camp. You're going to be drafted somewhere between 18 and 28, and there are four teams lined up that are going to draft you and committed to drafting you, and versus what the feedback that Bruno was getting, yeah, which was he's going to be you know second round pick at best. Of course, you come back and plug your way into the first round at that point. Look, these look, here's what people forget, and I know you don't forget it. Most of these kids do not come to college to get a fantastic education. It's just, it's just, that's the way it is. So if you come to college to make to try and forge a professional career, and it could include the NBA, you've accomplished your reason for going to college. Of course. All right, and and to me. Nobody in the world, especially Mark Turgeon, would ever have told Kevin Herter, oh, come back. You're only going to be number 19. You know, <laughs> next year you might be number 12. So you're going to make $3.2 million instead of $2.3 million. Big deal. Kevin Herter accomplished his purpose. He was great for Maryland. I can't, I'm sure like you, you know, we can't wait to watch him in the pros. And 
I feel great about it. I feel that Absolutely. that's a that is a function of coming to college. It's, and what a great job Turgeon did developing him. And Bruce, if you remember when they first started recruiting him, he was a six three point guard. You know, he was up in Siena, and here Pat says is calling Dustin Clark and telling Marilyn, hey, this kid's too good for Siena. You should take a look at him. Marilyn developed him into not only a first-round pick in the NBA, but a first-round pick in two years. I mean, that's, that's a tremendous feather in the cap for Mark Turgeon and his staff. No doubt, but I will tell you this much. I am very upset that Dustin Clark decided to leave. He was such an asset to the university, a tremendous recruiter, all right? And I understand that, you know, he's got an opportunity to really get into a multi-million dollar business. And uh, let that be the fact. He did not get fired. He did not, you know, have battles with other guys on the staff. He went for a better opportunity just like anybody else would. That's another Unbelievable That's another thing. Listen, it's another thing that bothers me is the second that, you know, it happens, oh, Turgeon pushed him out. That's ridiculous. That's that like pushing so out his son. All right? He's not going to push out his son. Him and, <laughs> him and, him and uh, although, although uh, what's his name, Rivers pushed out Austin Rivers to the Wizards. All right? <laughs> But you're right. I mean, that was the relationship that Mark had with Dustin Clark, and Dustin Clark did an unbelievable job at Maryland. Unbelievable job. But he had a business opportunity, Bruce. He could not turn down, and he looked at the quality of life of other coaches around the country. He looked at Jimmy Patsos. You know, Patsos only got a job as a head coach after uh, his team at Maryland won a national championship. Okay, and then he sees the quality of life. Dustin told me 52 weeks of the year, he only had two weekends in a year where he had some time off. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I, and you look at the number of hours he worked. You know, it just it was unbelievable. So his quality of life is going to skyrocket. By the way, now. did you ever see him in a bad mood? Did you ever see him not smile? Did you ever see him not talk to anybody who wanted to talk to him ever? I love Dustin. How Clark. many people listen? How many people say they love Dustin Clark and he's a close friend? I say it. You, everybody says everybody it. Everybody says it. Because everybody loves him, you know. <laughs> all right, let's move on. All right. And uh, uh, we've established that, that this is not something to worry about. And if it is, then you're right. You see, it better hit me in the face. Okay. But let's move on to football. And uh, Rick, the, the tragic death of Jordan McNair can they get past this? Can they get on to the season? I mean, it's very, you know, it's very, very Trump. Durkin has been devastated by this. Absolutely no doubt. And, you know, you saw that uh, every day from the time McNair went down. Uh, I still DJ see was, it. Listen, I still see it. He's not the same. Per- it's like he is just totally devastated. And he was at the hospital every single day from the time that uh, Jordan was hospitalized until the time that he passed away. And you saw him at the press conference. But, yes, teams get past this. Think back to University of Maryland basketball. Chris Patton, Owen Brown, huge hits, too. Two student-athletes that died while at Maryland from heart problems, and those teams weren't devastated. I think they recommitted themselves to go in trying to win a championship for those fallen players. And yeah. I think if you're in a football team and you and I are in the locker room, that's the message we give to the other players. Yeah. Look, we can mope or we can get out, work our butts off, and go win a championship and, and let this, uh, this inspire all of us to win for Jordan. Yeah, I, it's 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 even special troubling here in Baltimore because he went to Randallstown. He's got a great family, and uh, well, it's just uh, very tough. And I know I don't think Durkin will ever be the same. I really don't, and that's not unusual. But uh, the kid was such a good kid, and Durkin liked him so much, and uh, just tragic. It is such a tragedy. Just a tragedy. So, on September 1st, we kick off this season. Nice, easy game against Texas. <laughs> Just a, I they're mean, coming loaded for bear. After yeah, Kevin Anderson did Durkin well by scheduling that game, all right? <laughs> and, then, and then, look, give credit to Durkin for beating Texas last year. You think they'll be pumped for this game, the Longhorns? <laughs> you know, and that game last year was so big because it was their coaches, you know, first game of the new era down there. And to beat Texas at Texas was unbelievable. But uh, they, you know, if they get Kasim Hill back and he's healthy, if Piggy's back and he's healthy, they have a lot of firepower, Bruce, the Terps. Yeah. Uh, the defense that has to get better. Rick, Brian Coward will give them the pass rush, and if Anna Bonham comes back healthy, 
service would be much better. Rick, I tell you though, you know, when you know, being honest about it, you know, in this conference in the Big Ten, they really need to break this up because it is just they are killing Maryland and Rutgers, and I think uh, in, is Indiana in the conference? Yeah, I think so. No, no, I think they're on the other side. All right, well, Maryland and Rutgers for sure having to face these four behemoths every year. It, it's it's well three and a half behemoths. Well, I don't put Pedophile State University in a behemoth category. Well, they were eleven and one last year, and they could have played for the national championship. Yeah, no Barkley this year. We'll see how how behemoth they are. All right, you're right. All right, they're a bad team. All right. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. Don't put them in the behemoth category. Well, and I don't know why any athlete from this area would go to that school when you have zero job opportunities in the Happy Valley, unless you're a Cal veterinarian, Bruce, or unless you're Saquon Barkley. <laughs> well, there uh, you go. What well, what an athlete! What an athlete! He is. I mean, whatever you think about Penn State. And he fell athlete. in their lap, right? Yeah, no doubt. So. But my point is this, all right? I mean, Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, it, it, having to play them every year, can, they, can you get to that level? I mean, is it 20 years away, 10 years away? And when I don't you think know. about it, it's like you set up in baseball. You know, you want to set up your pitching for a series, right? You know, you come in and you say, okay, gee, we have a high state at home. It's a big game. Okay, next week you're at Michigan and 105,000 people screaming at you. Okay, and then you're back Michigan State, and then you're on the road at, against Penn State at 100,000 people plus. And, oh, by the way, your crossover game is against Wisconsin. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's – listen, no coach – listen, if Tur- if Durgin, if Durkin can go – this is no – I really mean this. If he can go 8-4 – all right, and it's unlikely, extremely unlikely. But if he could go eight and four, a statue should be erected of him. <laughs> all right, at Gossett, Okay, I'm t- I'm not making that up. I really mean that. In other words, if he could take this team to an eight and four, seven and five is unbelievable. I agree. All right, and, and just six think what and recruiting six. He could do off of that. Then, so too. that look, we said Turgeon standard is he's got to get to the tournament. You agree with me? Yes. Durkin's standard is he's got to get to a bowl game. And to me, anything more than that is an absolute victory. All right? You know, he's such a phenomenal recruiter. His whole staff are recruiters. If they can get a level of success and then go from that foundation, we will be in that same conversation with the rest of the teams in that division. Uh, I tell you what, I hope so. I pray so. But uh, it's got a lot of work ahead of them. It no really, doubt. it really is tough. And where does that work start, Bruce? That starts with your listeners. You know, hey, I'm a Terp fan. Oh yeah, are you a member of the Terrapin Club? You know, it's 135 dollars to join. Pick up the phone, <laughs> go online, download the application for Terrapin Club, send in the check, and support these student athletes. You want to make Maryland great? Join the Terrapin Club and go to the football games. Absolutely. And if you don't want to buy a season ticket. Catch one or two games. Take your kid. I'm telling you, it's a great, great experience. Uh, the attendance has is, is been okay, but uh, we got to get more season ticket holders. we got to get a bigger Terrapin base. It's a lot to be done. and it's, it's not that far from Baltimore to College Park. you know. And the packages they have now, you can buy a game to see Texas, Maryland on Labor Day weekend and then pick your other – Big Ten team to go with that. I mean, how good would that be? Throw 10 kids in the car and Look, take them they, and watch Texas play. They've got the family packages. You can go to a Maryland game. It, it is absurd. It's the my, best value. In my season ticket for Maryland, all right, in the middle section, uh, Rick, I think the tickets are like $70 a game, and I'm on the 50 yard line in the middle deck. Now, it doesn't get much better than that, correct? And compare that against. Yeah, you know, the Ravens. The, the Ravens, who I love. But. $345 for the same ticket. And I got to tell you something. In the middle deck at the club section for the Ravens, you ain't got as good a seat as I got. I all right? And you, because you may as well say you're in the upper deck. And the upper deck tickets are so cheap, it's ridiculous if you buy the family pack. But listen, you know, it preaches enough. They got to win. Bottom line, they win. People will come. It's that simple. Agreed. All right, Rick. You get it off your chest? Do you feel better now? <laughs> My head may still explode if somebody says, hey, well, there's smoke, there's fire. All right. No, there's uh, no smoke, there's no fire, there's no wrongdoing from Maryland at all. all right. Go Terps. Thanks for coming on. We'll see you at the Texas game for Love sure. Love you, Bruce. All right, take care. See you, man. All right. So, 14-1 to USA. What's happening with Wimbledon? Serena's gone for another championship. You know, I heard, I was listening, as I always do, 
to either 105.7 or 1300. I think uh, they were simulcasting the same guy. It's on ESPN. Uh, anyway, Serena's gone for another championship. And I have to tell you, I have to make one statement about Serena because I was listening coming in. And I don't think the, uh, the DJ understood what Serena went through. Not just having a baby, an emergency C-section. That happens every day. She almost lost her life. All right? She almost lost her life. She was in on from complications from the pregnancy. And here she is. It's almost incredible that she's back and playing for the championship. I mean, it's almost incredible in that short amount of time. As Djokovic and Nadal, what are they even? Yeah, they're in the fifth set. I forgot that that was being picked up. So Serena will come afterwards. And uh, once again, the USA heart was broken with John Isner lost 26-24 in the fifth set. Hard to imagine. Back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. First section was brought to you by Coons Ford. All right, Coons Ford. What can we say? Trucks, trucks, trucks. I think Dennis told me 200 F-150s in stock. Saturday, great day to buy a car there. Why? Because their lunch is unbelievable. All right. So if you're going to buy a car and pick it up on Monday, pick it up today. Take it from me. Take your family out there. They don't care. But uh, best place in the world. Greatest shop in the world. Great service. I love the place. I've purchased over 40 cars from them. With that, we'll head out to our first break. Back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio. Welcome back to Sports Maven, presented by Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. Now, once again, here's Bruce Posner, Sports Maven. All right, back here on segment two of Coons Ford presents a, uh, Sports Maven. This segment's brought to you by Science and Kirk, clearly the number one personal injury uh, lawyer, lawyer firm in the country. Uh, I think that uh, my producer will verify that. Is that true? Yes. Okay. I'll make sure you said that or else you won't have a job. <laughs> all right. But uh, not with me, with Science and Kirk. All right. But uh, hey, In the Nest is coming up. We might have a time change on that. We haven't decided yet. But uh, we might have a time change on In the Nest and uh, we'll let you know. But I'm excited about the Raven season. I am too. You know, especially, you know, it's funny, after Maryland basketball did not perform well, I was excited about the Orioles season. Well, that <laughs> ship has that ship has sailed, all right? No, so that's now, Raven season. Yeah, excited about the Raven season. I like their schedule. I like their home games. Uh, I'm anxious to see Joe Flacco with a few weapons right now. But ESPN.com rated... The Ravens' combination of offensive players, not including the quarterback, 24th in the league. That's not too strong, is no, it? No, no, it's not. They cited uh, Crabtree dropping a lot of balls the past three years. If that happens, I, I'm just going to throw the talent. All right. Whatever happened to uh, our first round pick? Perriman? Yeah. Of Corn, I mean, he's not cut yet. and But he's basically trying to make the team. Right. And. I know that a lot of fans have had absolutely enough of him, and I have too, but I feel like if it really doesn't make a big at-the-end-of-the-day difference between cutting him now and cutting him at some point in camp, does it really hurt to give him just one more chance to see? Yes, yes. It it hurts. It hurts him. Okay. All right, because he should be released and try and make his own deal. He's not going to make this team. All right. No, he's not. He's not going to make no, this team. Not. So well, all they're doing, unless there's five injuries, right. and maybe that's what they're protecting themselves against. I don't know. But I, you know what's funny? This is no lie. I am the biggest, biggest hater of exhibition football games. Yes, absolutely. You know I am. Yes. The first time in my life I'm looking forward <laughs> right. to the exhibition games right. to watch Lamar, Lamar. Jackson. It's I almost exciting. can't wait to see him play. Bruce, I'll tell you a quick story. I have never been to a Ravens week one game before, and I've, I've now lived in Baltimore for seven or eight years. Are we years. talking about exhibition? No, no, uh, I'm, ta- I'm talking about opening week day. one. But the, my point was, you know, you want to buy tickets when the prices are good. I, I do a big job of with the uh, with this secondary ticket market, and 
we just knew, me and my friend wanted to buy the tickets, that if we waited until after the first preseason game, the first time Lamar breaks for a 20-plus yard run, which is going to happen in those first, I mean, they have the Hall of they have five games. Everyone's going to be able to watch on TV Lamar, you know, hopefully shine at that Hall of Fame game, assuming that the field is in good condition and all that stuff. But they're going to come back here for that preseason game, and people are going to be excited. It's going to be a, a new era for a lot of Ravens fans. Last year was kind of a cleansing process for a lot of people. It was hopefully cathartic for most. I mean, it was very frustrating, but having Lamar here, I mean, doesn't that just change the entire tone of the year, to get, especially those preseason games, well, like look, you said? The preseason games, we're going to get RG3 probably in the first half, or maybe in the second half, and oh, Lamar, Lamar in the other half. Wow! Yeah. That's worth the price of admission. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. As I'm not excited about the championship game tomorrow, although I should be. <laughs> it's going to be you a know, fun Because my game. team lost. England right. lost. My son-in-law is still grieving. All right. But, uh, and I also think, I tell you, I watched France play, all right, against Belgium. And to me, I was not greatly overly impressed well, Belgium is a very very good team in themselves so I, I was actually expecting Belgium to win that game I think Belgium they certainly had, could have absolutely so but I don't think that was necessarily a uh, any sort of uh, reflection on France being not that good however they, I mean they go on wait, wait a minute the four remaining teams are great the right four teams are there absolutely maybe Brazil maybe, maybe. yeah but you know what they lost right you know, they couldn't score. They Absolutely. couldn't put the ball in the bucket. So it's but outside of that, to me, it's unquestionable the four best teams are the four, are the four that were uh, remaining. Hey, they're the f- four teams that played the best. You're not going to tell sure. me Argentina was the best, no. and you're not going to tell me uh, Italy if was. If or, we're looking at, on paper, if you're looking at t- these players that we watch during the season for, for all these different leagues and th- these all-stars, as you can put it in an American term, like in terms of on paper, France trounces. Uh, Croatia. However, I think that Luka Modric might be the best player on the field. And it's going to be a very interesting game. Soccer Let's is Let's call him the most inspiring player on the okay. field. Okay. All right. I mean, listen, like he, a Ray he, Lewis. Well, he's, he's like a Ray right, Lewis. Right. And he's a, in a position of influence on the field. So whether or not he's imposing himself in front of the goal, he is probably the most influ- right. In, he's the most influential player on that field. He needs to get a haircut, though, because <laughs> that hair flops over his eyes. I don't know how it's you can see. It's a European thing, Bruce. Yeah. Come on. All right. Today, Belgium plays... England. England. Does that game matter? No. I'm not watching. All right. I mean, I, mean I, I, have, I have prior engagements, but I mean, I, first of all, I got to say, while I say that I'm not watching, I'm glad it exists. I wish more of that stuff existed in American sports, like having these like one-off crutches. But I'm matches. just saying it's amazing they give it a separate day, and it's probably... Hey, mm, it's, a, it's a TV event for them to sell. Right. But my point is, it's, does Harry Kane play the whole game, or they do this half a game again? He'll probably do a half a game. Right. So, in other words, there's no... In- I think if he scores in the first half, he might not come out for the second half. Because of the golden boot? Yeah. Yeah, Harry Kane's in the lead for the golden boot, and the player from Belgium... Uh, Lukaku. Lukaku could score twice to tie him, and that's about it, and that's the end of the golden boot, but I think it's a meaningless award. Uh, I mean, look, Harry Kane is probably... Is he one of the premier penalty kick guys in the world? I, and he's one of the premier scoring in front of the net people. I mean, penalty kicks are a whole different animal, so you never really know. But I mean, he's, he's but he's winning this yeah, on the basis of yeah, penalty kicks, absolutely. Because he had two yeah. on the field goals, two headers, and he had one accidental goal and three penalty Listen, kicks. He's the best goal scorer. That's the official stance of of the sports right. show. I, I just want to. I gave you a chance to refute me. I'm glad you did. <laughs> All right, so we we clear that hurdle and. Uh, you know, what can we say? Let's just talk. I got another theory that I want to hear if you agree with. Are you ready? If I own the Orioles, all right, if I own the Orioles, Manny Machado would not be playing. And not because I'm mad wow. at him. Not because I'm not, not because I'm mad at him. very progressive. But you, have you heard that from anybody? No. You know why? I'm 100% right. Manny Machado trade is a big part of the Orioles' future. For years. Right. And if he gets hurt, all right, playing in meaningless games, which is what they... All right, let me amend it a little bit. Playing Manny Machado on the road is just stupid. Yeah, it's irresponsible. I mean... I play him in a home is kind of like, okay... 
you know, I buy season tickets. And other people have them in their plans, and they plan to see them. And believe it or not, I understand 45,000 pre-sold tickets for the night, and they knocked the Oriole fans. 45,000 seats because it – it is this flag it's, jersey it, 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 it looks really nice. That jersey does look is really nice. Is it a nice. button-down jersey? It is a button-down so jersey. So it's the one they've given away before. Well, it's, it, but it's black. This one's black, ah. and, it, and it has the uh, the flag in the color. It, it's, listen, it's a very sharp giveaway, and, and it's going to be okay. a fun night. But so like, listen, for those of you gonna be, who— This is going to be a, a mournful experience tonight at Camden Yards. It's going to be a lot of people's last chance to see Manny Machado. Yeah, I agree. But I want to say one thing. Uh— if you want to go to the if you want to get the shirt and look, the Orioles are going to be here when Manny leaves. So right, right. You know, it's don't worry it's not about the that. End of the world, right? So uh, you can get a ticket for fifteen bucks. Absolutely. The shirt's worth twenty dollars, twenty five sure dollars. So you know, you can just go to the game, do both, and uh, go for five innings. You know, but but what what you said rings really true with me because it reminds me of these players who don't want to play in like the senior bowls and, and stuff like that in college. You don't want to risk your entire future. And, but like. Why wouldn't a team want to protect themselves in that same way? I well, mean, I do this, have this a is... problem with a kid who won't play in a bowl game. That happened, you know, in the past few years. Right. The but guy... how is that? Di- so, so, so it's the same thing, but it's it's from the perspective of a team protecting because themselves. Because the school versus a gave player. him a four year education. The school gave him a lot, and to decide he doesn't want to play, I, I think there's and also for his teammates. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, and, and I think that's probably the case that Manny and the, the, the team kid from would Stanford. Make... Who am I thinking about? Who um, plays for Carolina. Oh, I, I know exactly who you're talking about. Unfortunately, I'm completely spacing on, on okay. his name right now. You'll get it for the next break. Right. I, I keep on wanting to say Toby Gerhardt, but that's, no, <laughs> that's no, not no, who no, you're no, talking no, about. No, no. Um, but at the same time, Bruce, I think that's probably how Manny and the Orioles feel, is they feel like that. I mean, if you see how Scope and Manny are interacting on the field right now, I mean, although it may be frustrating for a lot of Orioles fans, they're clearly having a lot of fun, and they're definitely yeah, relishing their the opportunity thing. Here's to the play thing. together. Yeah, but here's the thing. This is too important. No, I'm with you. This is too So, Brady, if you're this listening— This would never happen. It's Buck, happened. if you're listening, he should not be playing. All right, I'll give another set pop. DH. Okay. All right, let yeah. him play DH. All right, less likely you take him out of the game half the time. He can pinch hit. But I'm telling you, this is just stupid. I'm telling this is one of those things. I'm ahead of the game here. This is one of those <laughs> things. That I'm serious. No, if something are. happened... They're going to say it was the dumbest decision that the Orioles it ever could have made. It would change baseball going forward, I guarantee you. You, you, you. The next time that there's a big marquee free agent going into a trade deadline. But here's the thing, Bruce, and before we go to break, this point needs to be made. There has never, ever been a position player of this value available at the trade deadline. Someone who is having a legitimate MVP quality season, who is a legitimate top five player in baseball, who is just now hitting his prime. People point to Manny Ramirez. Ramirez from 10 years ago when he, the Red Sox traded him to the Dodgers and he hit 400 for the last two months of the season. He was already 34, 35 years no, old. No, man, he's what, 24, 23? And, and he is uh, going to make a huge difference. I, I am very intrigued to see how these offers shake out. But the one thing that we got to give the Orioles credit for is as much as we hammered them for not trading Manny at the winter meetings last year, it seems like the market is starting to bubble up now at the right time. Well, let's hope so. Let's hope so because it's a crucial situation for the Orioles to get a couple prospects specs and maybe a position player and uh but make the deal already you know make the deal all right make it let's get out to our second break this is bruce posner you are listening to coons ford presents the sports maven we'll be back in a few moments here on cbs sports radio 1300 this is the sports maven show presented by coons ford of security boulevard now, here's the maven himself, Bruce Posner. All right, uh, back for segment three. Let me get my good buddy Wayne Viner on the phone right now. Wayne, you there? Wayne? Bruce, good morning. How are you, sir? Are you there? There we go. All I'm right. here. All right, good. All right, good to have you on as always. Just a couple subjects I'll kick up in the air. Number one. The MLB All-Star Game is in D.C. on Tuesday. Of course, it should have been the Orioles All-Star Game. Orioles were kind of uh, stripped of it because of their stubbornness and rightful stubbornness on the TV contract. But, Wade, uh, I'm excited about this game because i got to tell you something. It might be the last All-Star Game. You could be another 15, 20 years before it's in the area. And... Uh, 
You know, tickets are extremely popular for this game. They are on, in Mars. I was lucky to have bought one a while ago, but uh, extremely high. Are you excited about the game? The game itself, not so much. I'm not a big actual All-Star game fan. I think the biggest moment of these games is when they announce the team. That's my highlight of the game. Me too, Wayne. But but being here in the in the area, there's Fan Fest at the DC Convention Center. There's the the charity softball game. There's all this stuff that's going on. I like the stuff more than I like the game. Bruce, how do you look at that? I like the game more than I like the stuff because the stuff is just a bunch of garbage. Okay, to me. Uh. No, really. I mean, is the home... game any good? Well, hold on. That means you think the game's good? No, but the I think the... games have been horrible. Yeah, but wait a minute. I'm disappointed that it doesn't count for the uh, home field advantage for the World Series. But, but the introduction of the play... Look, it's not something I would fly to Los Angeles to go to. But when I can drive to the game and park my car and go to the game, to me... It's exciting, okay? But anything past that, no, I agree with you. And uh, it's fun to watch the intro of the players. I think that Max, is, did Max Scherzer, was he, is he going to be the starter? Yes. All right, good. I'm, and you know what? You know what I love about Max Scherzer? He really wanted to be the starter. He really wanted to. And a lot of guys don't even want to pitch in the game. They finagle a way to have their last start on Sunday so they don't have to go or they don't have to pitch anyway. But Max wanted to, and uh, ups for him for that. And the, but why, why do they finagle their way out of the game? Because really? it doesn't mean anything. And they don't want to. And there you go. They don't want to get hurt, but it does mean something. It does mean something. A it's a I, showcase. I it's, a real... it's a showcase of the game. And uh, no, the winner, though, there's very few great games, but uh, what the heck? I bought the ticket. Maybe I'm trying to justify it. All right. Uh, <laughs> the Orioles are now 20. Okay, but, but I have a hot dog question for you. Since it's the All Star game, are you going to use your uh, one hot dog? Get out of jail free card for the no, All-Star game? No, I used it on July 7th at the stadium, so I'm, I can't. Are the hot dogs that good there, though? No, they're not. I mean, you have with Africa, I have the, the best, best hot, hot dogs dog. around. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something funny, Wayne. I'll tell everybody, this is day two for me of dumping Diet Coke. Can you imagine this? And you know what good. kind of junkie I am. Heaven forbid Wayne comes to the press box to sit next to me after going to the uh, uh, press room and doesn't bring me a diet soda. Right, Wayne? Oh, yeah. It's a tradition. <laughs> but those things are bad for you. I mean, you're, you're, you're doing the right things to stay with us a long time. You, you changed your diet, and I think that Diet Coke stuff is worse than drinking regular soda. That's yeah. my opinion. The Nats, 47-47. and 47. Where is Dusty Baker? This team never would have been 47-47 and 47 with Dusty Baker, I don't think. Dave Martinez, has it worked, has it? Has it worked? We were talking about this the other day, and I'm, I was half laughing about it because every year the Nationals are supposed to be the greatest team you ever saw, and it just doesn't come true. To me, it reminds me when the Orioles – quite a while ago, brought in Lee Mazzilli, who was supposed to be groomed to be this great manager. He was a player for the Mets and, and so forth, and he was ready to be the next great manager, and the Orioles were lucky to have him. And what, he lasted a year? He well, wasn't Charlie, really ready. Charlie Ekman, I, I think I, you know who he is, but I really know who he is. Charlie Ekman was a great talk, sports, one of the first sports talk guys, phenomenal. He used to say this about Baltimore. If you want an expert, bring in an out-of-towner. And that's what they did with, uh, and that's what they did with Lee Mazzelli, and that's about what they're doing with uh, Dave Martinez. They had a guy who was doing great, and uh, because he didn't do farewell in the playoffs, gone. You know. Now, of course, the Capitals, they take the other route. They, they wait till a guy wins their first Stanley Cup ever, and then they get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry, hockey, Wayne, that's it, the truth. But hockey's different. Hockey, they change managers in March, change coaches in March. And still win things. I think Ted Leonsis is what's different. <laughs> hey, you know what else? i tell you what else. Here's a great example. Two years ago, Chelsea dominated, 
dominated the Premier League yeah. like there was no tomorrow. And this past year, they came in fifth. Oh, my God, out of 19 teams, they came in fifth. And guess what happened to the coach? Gone. Antonio Conte, one of the most flamboyant coaches in the Premier League, gone. So, I mean, coaches, it, it, part of being a coach is being fired. It's part of the ritual. It's part of the whole thing. And every sport has it. All right. So one more thing about this. Yes. There was a, a while where I think that baseball-wise, Dusty Baker was probably the toughest guy on the team. And in some ways, for me, it reminds me of, you, of the Ravens and Anquan Bolden, where they fired the toughest guy on the team. And that's not a good thing to do, usually. No, and it's I think not. The Nats are suffering from not having that internal toughness that he brought to the team. All right. I want to move on. i got a few other things I want to bring up. Uh, tomorrow, USA versus Canada, tomorrow at 12 o'clock. It's either on the U or, or on ESPN2. Wayne, tape it if, I, if you're busy. Watch this game. And I want you to watch number 36 for the USA, Jesse Bernhardt playing long pole defense down low. He has been incredible, as we know. And John Galloway, the goalie, the coach of Jacksonville, all right, John Galloway is the best clear. I used to think Jesse Schwartzman is, and Rob, if you're listening, don't get mad at me. But I'm telling you that John Galloway, I've never seen clearing passes like this guy has been tossing. Watch the game tomorrow. Even if you don't like lacrosse, that will be a great one. Seven seasons, DeMarco Murray retires from the NFL. What do you think about that, Wayne, after only seven seasons? Look, uh, the guy Alexander, who was the player of the year for the Seahawks, was a tailback for uh, Alabama, didn't last that long. Sean Alexander, this guy was player of the year, didn't last that long. Running backs don't last that long. Seven years is a good run for that position. And he hasn't been that effective recently. Uh, boy, you get the heck beat out of you playing running back in the NFL. 2016, he rushed for 1,287 yards. Last year was not as good a year, obviously, but it's just hard to imagine. Now, here, here's one that I don't understand, and maybe you guys can explain it to me. Minnesota Timberwolves all-star Jimmy Butler turned down a four-year deal worth $100 million to play one year for $19 million. Now, here's my problem with that. It's the same reason I think they sit Manny Machado. You're gambling $75 million when you do that. He would have, take it back, $80 million. He would have $80 million in the bank, all right, no matter what happened, all right, if he signed that contract. And it's, you know, it's Jimmy Butler. I mean, it's that Steph Curry. And he's great and all that stuff. But, Wayne, what happens if he gets hurt? Do you know what he gets the last three years? Nothing. Joe he really Joe must Flacco. hate Carl Anthony Towns. He really must dislike playing with that man to take that risk. He's been, he's basically made that very very public. But I I think that it's basically Joe Flacco is the ultimate parallel. I think that it's it's proved to pay off a lot of the times as long as you can stay healthy. And Jimmy Butler, say what you want about him, he's been a pretty I mean ruthless. Uh, just durable player. I think that he is betting on himself, and in an age of the NBA where next year is going to be an even crazier free agency cra- class, and he's going to be able to basically, you know, tailor his future to however he wants it to, he's not going to get locked in with apparently, and I think Wayne is exactly right. He does not like playing with Carl Anthony Towns. It must be bad. And, I mean, listen, Thibodeau, he's played basically with his entire career because he played with him in, in Chicago, too. I, that doesn't seem like a very fun place to play. Uh, I don't know. Down to the last minute, uh, just for information's sake, lefty uh, Phil Mickelson missed the cut at the Scottish Open. Uh, what that means, I don't know. I don't think that he has a shot this year. Carnoustie, my early pick for Carnoustie, I haven't studied yet, is Rory McIlroy. How about you, Wayne? I'm not into it enough to give you a certified pick like that, Bruce. Okay, well, you're being honest. You could have given me a pick, and nobody would know the difference, though. (laughs) Austin Johnson. That is a real long shot in my (laughs) eyes because... (laughs) 
<laughs> you, hey, you, you asked for a name. Sea Biscuit. <laughs> I'm going to pick Sea Biscuit. They like the grass over there. Uh, they really That's enjoy chewing up the greens. Pick. It's wonderful for them. No, oh, it's a tough one. We're out of time, man. We'll leave it on that. We'll leave it on that note, Wayne. Thanks for checking in. See you on Wednesday on Terp Talk. We'll have Pat Coiner on.